All right, guys, we're back, and uh, it's been a little bit, like, day, whatever. But uh, things came up, so I couldn't finish off the transmission uh, valve body last night. Um, but here we are to complete the job. So, uh, we have our TCI kit instructions. We have our replacement valve springs. And we have a specific, uh, I think it's just a 1 8 drill bit, a different check ball, and a plug if we need it. So I recommend reading everything through, so I've gone and read most of it. It's like pretty much every shift kit I've ever done though. Um, and all you have to do is follow the instructions. If you get confused, you know, reach out to somebody, a transmission shop, or heck, Google it. YouTube works. Um, anyway, let's get started and see how far we can get. Now we're going to do this <clears throat> with the thought of assembling everything in mind once we're done. Now the first part is just your uh, list of things you're going to need. Now there are some items that are year specific. So you got to know the year of your transmission. This is 77 and later. So as you can see you've got 67 and 74 for this spring. 75 and later for this spring. These guys apply for everything. Um, and it starts with the basics of removing the valve body, stripping it down, and then we get over here. This gives us a breakdown, this page right here. So I'm actually going to remove that page, place it here, since we've already got everything stripped down anyway. And then we're going to start right here, hopefully. Okay, four removing the pressure regulator assembly which we've already done that is the guy that goes in here I'm gonna grab my pressure regulator assembly springs and such all right we've got everything now um, let's go through there's different years for different springs. So 1977 and later, we're going to upgrade to the orange spring. There's two springs in it, which, yes, there's two springs there. We're going to get rid of this plain spring, and we're going to put in the orange spring from the kit. So we'll put him aside. in the bag there's our orange spring so he's going to slide in like so now we can take our pressure regulator assembly we can install the first spool valve all the way down in there we go and then we can take our uh, cap and there is an orientation on it it's got a beveled end one way and you can screw that up so what it should do we'll try this we'll put the cap on the valve first and then we can grab the tip of the valve and run it down until we get it in the bore there we go down and we take our two springs the little spring, I don't know if you can see in there, but the little spring sits on the edge of the valve, on the, on the relief of it. And the big spring just goes around it. There's another view right there. You can see the one spring inside on the valve, the second spring is on the outside of it. Maybe you can't, I don't know, I'm not great at filming, obviously. Then we take our second spool valve, and we're actually going to put it inside the cover for it which sat just like that and we'll put him in place and now all we have to do 
is click our retainer into it. Once we've got it in so the groove lines up right here, we just take our little snap ring, push it down inside till it engages the two sides of the belt body, and boom, he's in. Good to go. You just want to make sure it sits flush or lower than the machine surface. We don't need to get in the way of the separator plate. All right, that's the first one done. Now, step five is involves removing the throttle boost end plate, which is right here in figure five, throttle boost. So I'm going to get all of these parts together. So now, <clears throat> Remove the two bolts that hold the throttle boost end plate to the valve body. Use care when removing the end plate spring pressure. La da 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 da. Remove only the low scheduling valve spring. See figure five. Replace it with the violet spring in the kit. Reinstall the end plate and tighten the two bolts. Only finger tight for now. Okay. So now we are going to want to take this little guy right here, and we're going to replace him. with this little violet spring. See there is a difference if you hold the two of them that one's going to create a lot more force than this guy. Alright so he can move over here with the springs we're not going to use anymore. And we'll put these ones back in the kit. Alright let's get assembly happening. Alright, now that we got a lot more spring pressure, we're just going to try to be a little bit gentle and get these bolts started. Now we got them in probably about three turns a piece. It's safe to release it. And then, like it says, we're just going to put them down finger tight, but I'm going to use my ratchet to do that just to make this easier. The reason why they say finger tight is because you have to uh, torque these down when you're done. And we'll have torque specs and go over everything. So there, just stop. Next up is our downshift valve, or kick down valve as I like to call it. Goes in like so. Our little spring fits down and you got to make sure it goes inside the valve. There we go. And then And we have to get this guy to push past the spring. So we'll put him in there. And then what I'll do is I will take a bolt. If this will fit, it'll be great. Nope, it's going to be too big. There we go. Screwdriver for the wing. We just give it a little like push down. Yep, it's fully seated. And that, even if it raises out some, it's only going to go up to the separator plate, so it's never going to fall out. That's the whole design of it. And then we can check and make sure our valve moves nice and free, which it does. So we're happy there as well. So far, so good. Next item, cross off number five. 
Number six is the valve end plate. So that's this long guy, right? Now I'll just go through them. This one is our intermediate modulator and small spring for it. Then we've got our accumulator and its dual springs. Then we've got this little guy and there's supposed to be a spring with him. So that goes like that. Doesn't help that that's... Okay, those two. And then what we have is this long assembly. That's this guy. And we have a long spring and the TM valve, throttle modulator valve, maybe, I don't know. And this guy is for our 2-3 shift. Oh, this is our 2-3 back cut, or back out valve. Probably for uh, venting pressure on the, from the second gear clutches to the third gear clutches, you know. Alright, then we've got, so we got, we're there, we got the 1-2 shift which I put backwards actually. And then we got these two little guys. This is the coast valve and this is our cutback valve. Again, cutback means fluid pressure cutback. Coast means I guess when you take your foot off the gas. So let's see what this says. Alright, so we've removed the valve end plate right here. Eight bolts, yes there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bada bing. Now two bolts are longer, and I've forgotten about that. I don't know if they're supposed to be or if somebody just did that. But we will find out. Yes, I can see them actually. I'll, I'll point that out to you later. That there are two longer bolts and there are places for them. Okay. So we've done that. Now, the intermediate servo modulator spring, all models, remove and replace with TCI plugs supplied with this kit. The servo plug must not stick out of the valve body casting. If the plug is not below the plate contact area, remove the plug and grind one end slightly. Remember to deburr and clean before reinstalling into the valve. Okay, so let's go find the intermediate servo modulator spring. Uh, here's our intermediate servo modulator. It's the very first one right here. So it says to remove the spring and we're not putting it back in. Okay. And it also says we have this little, uh, what do they call it? Servo plug. All that means is you're not going to get a cushion. This is how you firm the shift. You remove some of the cushioning, right? So you're not going to get a cushion on that shift it's going to firm it up make it apply faster and more positively and depending on how wild you do your shift kit that's going to be your story right there so he goes into the end here and as you can see we have to find out if it's going to fit in below the level of the valve body so in we go and it does not so I have to nip off just a little tiniest little bit of that give me a few shakes here and we are now below that line so that can hang out there it'll probably fall yeah it fell out so I just gotta remember to put that back in when I'm ready all right now the intermediate servo accumulator spring all models Remove the inner and outer springs and replace with one plain TCI spring. And it gives you a little note that 67 models may only have one spring in the first place. We have two springs. And we've got the plain spring. And so there's the inside spring. And here's the outside spring. Like, look at the difference. Look at that difference. Like, doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. that's actually a lighter spring. You know why? so you can apply faster so simply slide that one inside him he goes on the end which is funny because he used to fit in but I'm not going to profess to know what they're talking about they do it all for specific reasons 
and we just have to follow along. Come on. You're having a little bit of sticky trouble, you just got to turn it and twist it a little bit in there. It slides right in the bore. Well, that is going to firm it up, I'll tell you that. All right, next. Oh, sorry, we don't use the inner spring anymore. My mistake. Both of these go away. There. Okay. See, we've just got most of our modifications dealt with already. We are doing the severe duty. There's there's three options. There's stock, severe duty, which is towing and, and having a load on it all the time, and then there's street and strip. Street and strip is the firmest, hardest shifts, you know, where you can bark your tires when it's shifting into second gear and all that jazz. But this truck is going to be used for hauling heavy loads and towing. So we don't need the full-on street strip. We just need to know it's going to be strong. And this will give you a very firm shift. I know that from experience. So we put in this, and we're sticking to the severe duty uh, agenda. Whatever it says severe duty, that's what we're doing. Severe duty on the cutback valve. No modification necessary. So, here's our cutback valve. That is this little guy. He can just go in place. Done. Next up, oh, where's my pencil? We don't need the street and strip. That's where the extra check ball that comes in that kit goes to. We don't need it. So then we're reinstall the end plate. Be sure that each valve assembly is pushed into place. Tighten all eight bolts, only finger tight for now. All right, so going off the pitcher, we just take them one at a time. Here's our 2-3 back cut valve, back out valve. Moves nice and free. This is where it's going to get just a little bit fun. I hold it down like so, kind of line up the bolt holes, and then if you look right by my thumb, you can see where it says long bolt or short bolt. You just got to pay attention to the details, guys, that's all. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Look at that. Just like that, I almost screwed up completely. Back apart she comes. So if you were just putting a shift kit in a good working transmission that was in the vehicle, you'd pull the pan off, drain the fluid, and then you would pull the valve body down. And then you would do these modifications, reassemble the valve body nice and clean, and put it back up with a new filter. So again, I am not tightening these down at all. I'm going down till I know that the metal plate has contacted fully and the bolts are just literally, you could say finger tight. If you could hold it all together and just tighten them, that would be finger tight. So that, I believe, is that. Let's put him aside now because, oh yeah, we got check balls to put in. So let's do some reading. And then we'll talk about our check balls. Okay, so step seven. This is done. Lay the valve body flat with the channel side up. Ba-boom. See figure five, budding. Install the converter check valve assembly. Install the relief spring, the fine one, and then the 9 seconds relief ball for early production. 
or the relief valve for later production, install the reverse clutch check ball. Did you catch any of that? Because I didn't know what that meant. Okay. Oh, here we are. Remember we had two springs that stood up. One had the cup on them. So now, now it says that one goes there, but I don't believe it. This one goes right here. And this guy, let's have a look, what did it say? I mean, I'm at a springs, so, uh, says it goes here but it doesn't fit there it goes here but I can't remember okay yeah it goes this way just like that so he's in place he's in place okay we're rocking again now for severe duty we also install all the check valve all the check valves well, it doesn't differentiate which one is which in this, so let me look in the manual to see if I can get some uh, info here. Alright, took a little bit of digging through my paperwork. Here is the factory service manual, and yes, the converter pressure relief valve goes here. We have the throttle pressure relief ball and spring goes here. So that means... Like that. That's going to be fun. Next up, that's why I didn't notice where the spring fell out of because I was too busy trying to hold the check balls in place. Ba doom. Next up, um, we have our downshift valve and spring check. The 2 3 shift check valve goes right here. And last up, the reverse clutch check ball. Right here. So you can kind of see there are other passages in here that would hold a check ball, but not used. And that's for different model year stuff. So we're sticking with what we have. Now that we know that, we can go back to the factory manual and see what it says. Okay, so valve body flat with the channel side up. Install the converter check valve assembly. Bing. Install the relief spring. Yep. And then the 930 seconds relief ball for early production or the relief valve for later production. This all should be right. The only one I'm questioning is why there isn't a check ball on here. But uh, it says valve, not ball, so we're okay. Um, yeah, if we go back it says install the reverse clutch check ball that's uh, this guy over he here and then install the two three check ball for severe duty which is right here if it was street and strip we would remove it to get that really firm two three shift like harsh we don't want harsh we want this thing to play ball nicely all right take your old separator plate and yeah, we can cross that off Separator plate. Take your old separator plate and compare with figure six right here. On the illustration, you will see two holes indicated. There's a couple of arrows right there for the two holes. And I wish it was color picture, honestly. TCI, hint, hint. But, okay, we got two holes. One of these will match a hole that is already in your separator plate. Lay the stock separator plate on top of the TCI separator plate using the stock plate as a guide. Drill the missing hole in the TCI separator plate using the supplied 1 8 drill bit. So I don't know why, since it's a missing hole, I don't know why they wouldn't just put it in, but they don't. 
So here's our stock unclean separator plate. And we've got, I don't know. Let's look at this. Well, well there's a hole that's missing. So you can see there are some differences in design. If you look this way, you can see some areas are covered up more than others. It's all in how they want it to be. Okay. Getting back to... We've got... One, two, three, and then these... Okay, we're missing one there. But... We're not missing it there. There's only the one spot I can see is this one right here. So I don't know why they say Well, I'm going to go with what the instructions say, not what the picture says. I'm going to take a big old chance. I'm going to clamp these two together and I'm going to mark that hole right there. But it only wants a 1 8. Boy, this, this is painful. And see, there's a hole over here that's missing. Mm. More research required. Alright, so it's taken a little while to decipher everything. Now, if we look on this separator plate. It says I'm supposed to have, right where these two little arrows point, two holes. So right next to these little group of three, there's supposed to be one hole, two hole, right beside it. Maybe that's that hole, I don't know, but it's not missing. You can see it on the back side right there, it's not missing. So that confused me, and I spent the last 45 minutes looking up forums and such. Now, from there, I found that right here is the 2 3 shift fluid feed. And you can see it's a smaller hole on the original valve body right there. It's already drilled out on the TCI separator plate. So I don't have to drill that one out. Now, if you get looking closer, over here is a completely missing hole and over here is a completely missing hole there is nothing about the literature anywhere on those and I can't find anything online so TCI stays off the shelf or stays off the transmission and it's it's bad because I can't find anybody that's really gone through this so if you take a look at our drill bit she's a 1 8 bit it fits perfectly in that hole so we are going to drill out this hole in the factory separator plate and move on in life. I always go on the back side. Helps clean up any burrs. Now I have to clean this because I didn't clean it, I wasn't expecting to use it. Step two in modifying the separator plate, which honestly, to back this up, there are a lot of valve body kits that only come as the springs. Springs, maybe a valve change, something else. I wish this one actually came with a new uh, uh, intermediate servo, <coughs> sorry, intermediate band servo uh, spring. There's a larger spring you can put in, make it stronger, but we didn't get that in this kit. And since this kit is designed to work with this rebuild kit, I'm not going to worry about it in my brain. But most of the valve body kits out there that I was finding, they run a, they just tell you where to modify the separator plate. And it's always that spot I just drilled out. So that's the only conclusive evidence I can have that this needs extra and the rest of it doesn't get touched. Is it the best thing in the world? Not really. I'm going to put in an email tomorrow to TCI and ask them what the heck's going on. And we'll see if they get back to me in time or not. But for now, 
I am confident I am making the best decision possible with the information I have. So, on to sanding this down. Alright, there's our separator plate. Now we can put the valve body together. We've got our two plates. Our retaining plates. And I can't remember where they went. Now I'm going to throw a little bit of trans gel on the tip of this to hold that check ball in place. There we go. Drop him back in. This is why you only finger tight it. Sometimes the bolts aren't perfectly lined up with the holes. So then you got to kind of mess it around a little bit just because you want them all to go down by finger here. Valve body. So, um, valve bodies together, I'm ready to torque it down, got my torque wrench, yay, good to go. This is the gasket for the separator plate. It's assembled. Now I have to disassemble it and install the gasket on the separator plate. It goes on the, the bottom half of the maze, or whatever you want to call it. Same thing, it's got a liner all up. Throw in your bolts. All right, right back where we were. And our check ball is still in place. Everything else looks good. We're happy. Now we torque it down. So I think I said 45 inch pounds for everything. There we go. Okay, valve body is now actually officially assembled. Now we can put the last valve body bolts in. Torque them guys down. Okay, now <clears throat> we can install our valve body. <laughs> 